Imagine that Jesus is in the synagogue in Capernaum. He just met a man completely, fully possessed by an evil, unclean spirit. And the spirit has cried out loud, I know who you are. I know you are the Holy One of God. What do you think Jesus' reaction will be? We'll discover this today by analyzing Mark 1.25, where we're going to see that Jesus starts talking to the evil spirit, and we're going to see a striking parallelism between what Jesus says here and what Jesus will say later on in a completely different episode. So we're going to slowly try to unveil this striking parallelism, which is going to give us a lot of information, interesting information about what Jesus is. And this discovery is going to probably be mind-blowing. So make sure to stick around until the end of the video. Let's read Mark 1.25. Kai epitimesen auto ho Jesus legon. Fimotheti kai exelse ex auto. The structure of this verse is very simple. There is the usual conjunction kai and. Then there is the principal verb. Epitimesen. And this verb wants the dative case. In this case, we're going to see what that means. And then you have the subject here. So very simple. Subject, verb, and dative. And then you have this legon, which we've seen also uh, in the previous verses, is a participle, present participle, all right, referring to the subject. And then you have a direct speech, a quotation, okay? And Jesus says this, Fimotheti, this is the first verb, verb one. Kai and exelse, verb two. These are two imperative. So he says something to the evil spirits. And these are the two things that Jesus asks or commands the evil spirits to do. Ex out to indicates a motion out of. We've seen this preposition ex many times. Out of, out to. So the structure is very simple. Let's go and try to translate word by word. The first verb, epitimesen, it's an aorist tense. How do we know that? Well, we have this epsilon in front of the root of the principal verb, and then we have this ending with this sigma here. So it's an aorist tense, third person singular. The verb, is a p timao okay a p timao so you have the preposition a p and the root verb which is timao as usual in greek the vast majority of verbs are made up of a base verb plus the addition of some preposition in front of it this is one of those cases now a p timao literally means set charge upon somebody a P means upon, on, all right? So set charge upon somebody in a negative sense, right? So rebuking somebody, admonishing somebody, okay? So I think the best way in this case is to rebuke, okay? To rebuke. So Jesus is rebuking the evil spirit. So, and he rebuked, and in English, rebuke, um once the direct object right i rebuke somebody in greek uh this verb wants the dative okay so it's epitimao to somebody literally to rebuke to somebody or to say something bad to somebody so auto it's the usual personal pronoun in the third person singular we've seen it so many times in this case we have the daily case which is um uh, indicated by this omega with the yoda subscript so he rebuked him jesus rebuked the evil spirit and he rebuked him and the subject is right here ho jesus uh jesus we know it's the name of jesus we've seen it many times and remember that in greek um more often than not, you're going to find the definite article in front of proper names. Uh, in English, we don't do that. We don't put the, the in front of proper names. In Greek, is very common. 
So it's the Jesus, literally. So, and Jesus rebuked him, legon. Legon, we saw it, um, comes from the verb lego, which means to say. Legon is the present participle, nominative, masculine, singular, that agrees with the subject, Jesus. So Jesus saying, saying. So, and Jesus rebuked him, saying. And here we come to the two commands that Jesus gives the unclean spirit. The first one is phimothety. Now, phimothety comes from the verb phimo. Okay. Phimo means to literally to put a muzzle. Okay. To put a muzzle on your mouth. All right. So phimothety is in the aorist tense. And it's an imperative form, but it's in the passive, all right? Aorist, imperative, passive, second person, singular. So literally means be put to silence, all right? Or put on a muzzle or be silenced. Or simply we could say silence. Be quiet, all right? He's shutting him up, okay? This is the verb that Jesus uses to shut up the evil spirit. And the second command is exalte. Well, this, we've seen this verb many times. Now, there is the preposition X that gets repeated here, okay? So there's a doubling of this preposition. Actually, the preposition is ek, which means out of. And when it's in front of a vowel, like here, there's an epsilon here, and there's an alpha here, the kappa gets softened into a C. So it becomes an X, all right? It's a variation of the same uh, preposition, which means out of, all right? Excelse, so this verb here is made up of the preposition X and the verb erchomai. We've seen this verb many times already. Erchomai, X, erchomai, X plus erchomai gives the verb X, erchomai. Erchomai means to go or to come. So X, erchomai means to go out of or to come out of. In this case, the meaning is to come out of. Okay, to come out of. So again, this is an aorist, imperative, active, and it means come out of, come out of. So be silent and come out of where? Well, pretty easy to guess. X out to, out of. So there's the, this repetition of, of out of, um, which is this insistence on Jesus on, on, on driving the demon out of the, the, the person. And auto is the usual personal pronoun. is the same as this auto. This auto was in the dative case. This auto, we know it, ending in omega upsilon is the typical genitive singular ending. All right. Why is in, gen is in the genitive case? Because the preposition ek wants the genitive after it. So out of him, all right? So let's put everything together. And Jesus rebuked him saying, be silent and come out of him. So we just seen here Jesus rebuking an unclean spirit, the spirit of Satan, under the power of Satan. Do you remember anybody in the New or in the Old Testament that has the power to rebuke Satan, to rebuke the evil spirits? This is the question. Who in the Old Testament has the power of rebuking Satan? Well, let's read from Zechariah chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. There's this vision of Zechariah, the vision of Joshua, the high priest of the Israelites, that is standing in front of Yahweh, in front of God, and he's being judged by God. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing 
before the angel of the Lord, the angel of Yahweh. When you see this Lord written in small caps, is the tra English translation of the Hebrew word Yahweh, the sacred name of God. All right. So there's an interesting dynamic here. There is Joshua, the high priest, which is standing in front of the angel of Yahweh. Okay. And then you have Satan standing at, at his right. So at the right of Joshua, there's Satan. What he's trying to do is there to accuse him. Remember, Satan in Hebrew means to accuse. So Satan means literally the accuser. is the one who tried to accuse us in front of God. And so what happens? Look at the reaction of Yahweh and the Lord and Yahweh said to Satan, the Lord Yahweh rebuke you, O Satan. So you have Yahweh that talks in third person, okay? Well, actually, who's speaking is this angel of Yahweh, okay? They're used as interchangeable terms, okay? So it's really the angel of Yahweh or even Yahweh, which is identified with Yahweh itself, that says, Yahweh rebukes you. What, what's going on here? Well, the Catholic interpretation of the, the Christian interpretation of this is the angel of the Lord here represents the word of God, represents God the Son. And God the Son has been given by God the Father the authority to judge. So he is the one who judge on behalf of the Father. And that's why there is this talking in third person. This seems weird, right? But if explained in terms of a Trinitarian view, it makes much more sense. So it's really God the Son that says to Satan, the Lord Yahweh, God the Father, rebukes you, O Satan. So you see the dynamics. God the Father granted God the Son the authority of rebuking Satan. All right? It's right there in Zechariah. What is that is telling us? This is telling us that the only authority that has that power of rebuking Satan can only be Yahweh himself, God. Jesus, God the Son, Yahweh in the flesh. Yahweh. God himself did not only rebuke Satan, he had the authority to rebuke also the power of nature. For example, the waters. We know that God led the Israelites through the Red Sea by opening up the Red Sea, right? And this is recounted, for example, in Psalm 106. In verse 9, we read, he, meaning Yahweh, God, rebuked the Red Sea. Is the same ter term used in Mark. Rebuked the Red Sea, and it became dry. And he led them through the deep as through a desert. So we see that in the Old Testament, God has the power to rebuke Satan and the evil spirits. But at the same time, Yahweh is the one that has authority over, over the powers of nature. And he can rebuke them and command them to stay silent, to open up, to dry up, and to freeze at his command. Now, why am I saying all this? Well, because we're going to see that Mark uses these two verbs. Remember those two terms. He rebuked him jesus rebuked the evil spirit and told him shut up basically shut up be silent he rebuked him and he's saying be silent well mark uses these exactly two terms only one other time in his whole gospel can you think of when that happens and here we come to the striking parallelism I was mentioning at the beginning. So here on top, you have Mark 125, which is the verse that we just analyzed. If we move on three 
chapters from here, we're going to see later on, in Mark chapter 5, verse 39, we're going to see, first of all, that these two verbs, epitimism, remember, he rebuked, and then he said, Fimosity, be silent, shut up, are repeated exactly in Mark 4.39 together. You have it here. Epitimism, it's exactly the same verb, same tense. And then you have this pefimoso, which is a variant of this fimosity, but the verb is the same, is the verb fimo, all right? Which we already seen, it means to be silent. Where is Mark using these two terms? Well, if we read this episode, you're going to recognize it immediately because Mark 4.29 said, and after waking up, he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, quiet, be silent. This is the famous episode when uh, Jesus is in the boat and he falls asleep and a big storm comes up. The disciples are scared. They wake him up and they tell him, Lord, don't you care that we're dying? And so he stands up and he rebukes the wind. He rebukes the sea and tells them to be quiet. The verb used is the same, used by Jesus to um, shut up the evil spirit. Be quiet. And... He rebuked the wind and the sea as he rebuked the unclean spirit. So you see this connection, right? So in the Old Testament, who had the power and the authority to rebuke Satan and silence Satan? Who had the authority to rebuke the Red Sea and make it still so that the Israelites could pass through? Well, the Lord Yahweh, God. In Mark, again, Jesus is performing those miracles that only Yahweh in the Old Testament was performing. That was a prerogative of Yahweh. Jesus is rebuking the evil spirits. He's rebuking Satan and reducing Satan to silence in Mark 1.25. And in Mark 4.39, he's doing the same with the powers of nature, as he did with the Red Sea. So you see this parallelism between Mark 125, Mark 439, Jesus rebuking the evil spirit, Jesus rebuking the power of nature that exactly match the Old Testament when uh, first in Zechariah, God rebuked Satan. And in the Psalm that we saw, the Lord rebuked the waters, the Red Sea. So perfect match, perfect parallelism. Jesus is Yahweh. He performs the same miracles. And he's the only one who could possibly have that authority over the nature and over Satan. If you think about it, if somebody has the authority to rebuke and put to silence um, evil spirits, Satan, Angels, it means that it has to be higher than the angels. And who is higher than the angels in heaven? There's only one higher than the angel. It's Yahweh himself. Mm -hmm.